Friends, I've had to reposition the filming just so that this scope is going to be able to fit on the screen. It's amazing. It's one of the longest telescopes that we have. Um, and it's taken its inspiration from the Japanese go-to telescopes. There were teacher ones that were uh, 100 millimeters in diameter and student editions that were 80 millimeters. So this is actually an 80 millim uh, sorry, a 100 millimeter F12 scope and it is amazing so let's have a look at it this is called the caisson olympus so this here is f11.8 technically speaking so basically f12 and i'm going to now show you how to get this ready to go on one of the caisson mounts that we have so the first thing you can do is you can actually retract it out to its full length of 330 millimeters um, retractable dew shield. As well as that, it also features an aperture cap, which will change this from an F12 or F11.8 into an F15. All you do there is you remove that. And you now have an 80 millimeter F15 instrument. When you take the entire thing off, you have a full aperture and then you go from there. So if you're looking at bright objects and you want to do some planetary viewing on bright objects, you would put on the aperture cap because you have plenty of length and you want to increase the F ratio. And for other objects, if you're looking at deep sky, deep sky, double stars, whatever, and you want a bit of light going in, then you can take that off and you have the full aperture. Having the full length dew shield also means that it is really, really well protected from dew. Um, as a basic guide, really, a dew shield should be triple the aperture. And a lot of manufacturers won't do it. So this is actually as a result of our request to Caisson to produce us a proper dew shield, which they've done. Um, as well as the dew shield itself, you actually have got full baffling on the inside of the tube. So to say it's well baffled is an understatement. There is no stray light really that's going to get in there. Let's return to the other end here and talk about this for a bit. It features a two inch focuser. And that's a massive uptick on some of the old go-tos from Japan, which could only take 0.965 inch eyepieces. If you took out the thing and jigged it a bit, you could get it up to 1.25, which I've enjoyed using. But there was just no way really to use a two inch um, eyepiece with it properly. Um, so what we've done now is um, by putting in a, a lovely case on um, two inch fine focuser, you're uh, along with the um, very slow one here. I mean, you are just gonna get that dead on. The focusing is going, it's just going to be remarkably easy on this particular instrument. You notice how I'm holding it? I'm actually holding it by the handle. Uh, thank God for that, okay? Because you don't really want to be lugging this around without a handle. It is so useful to have that there, all right? Now, it looks like it's not balanced properly, but have a think about this. Once you put all of your gear on the back, it will probably balance a whole lot better, okay? So that's just something that I want, to, want you to think about a bit. So enough talk, we are now going to mount this on there. What are we going to do? Let's, let's go back to our, our mount. So we have got a double saddle, uh, which is just as well. It hold, that means that it holds it in two, in, in two places. It's not tightened by um, one particular thing. So we're just going to retract these two screws and then we're going to insert it. Now, Caisson have um, got a protective um, layer over the vixen plate to prevent scratching but if it doesn't bother you just take it off if you think you're going to get a better grip it really doesn't matter it's just a vixen plate it's a piece of aluminium um, so you don't really have to worry about it okay so we'll insert this like this we'll get that up about there and we'll tighten her up to lock her in notice i'm holding the, the scope as I'm doing it. For God's sake, don't let go. Right, so that's now secure. Um, that's in there quite nicely. Notice I can move a movement here, plus we also have this movement. Right now that's undesirable. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna try to lock the mount. One. And I'm also going to lock this one. These are beautiful, sh beautiful shaped ones so you know, even in the dark, which way you're supposed to turn it in order to darken it. So, okay, there we are. That's now locked in. We're ready to go. 
um, it's not at all balanced. In order for it truly to be balanced, we have to put all the gear on there first because uh, the weights are going to change. So we need to put some equipment on. Okay, what equipment are we going to put onto here? There's a few things that you're going to need. You're going to need a diagonal, you're going to need some eyepieces, and you're going to need finders. When you purchase one of these telescopes, you can purchase what we call um, an accessory pack, which will extend the range of stuff that comes with the scope and has got some tremendously useful eyepieces and finders with it. So I'm just going to grab one of those packs and I'll give you a look at it. Right, so let's have a look at the pack and we'll have a bit of a talk about it. Um, this is just the basic um, caisson pack that um, you can get with it. It includes a 40 millimeter plossel to give you some great wide views, even with that scope, and a 26 millimeter five element eyepiece, which is a little bit reminiscent of some of the Masayamas from Japan that work particularly well with longer focal um, length instruments. You also um, have a 1.25 inch um, diagonal that comes with it and you have a finder that you can put onto the scope if you wish and we recommend that you do use a finder. Some people have already got finders like they've already got a quick finder or whatever um, that they are ready to use with it. If you don't this is excellent all right and you can um, put one of these on. Now the, uh, the diagonal that comes with it is fairly basic. Is this what you want? Um, we would suggest no if you possibly can Get yourself one of these. We usually have them in stock. This is a Beta Planetarium product. And it is simply put, an absolutely fantastic prism diagonal. That's going to be relevant. We're going to just talk about this a little bit for a moment. Why would you use, with diagonals you have prisms and you have mirrors. This telescope, the Olympus is designed for use with bino viewers. So with other words, you have an additional element that you can put onto the bottom of the focuser that extends the length of the focus that you're able to use. Let's have a look at that. We're going to start now. We're just going to take a, a break while I go and set all of this equipment up for you. Okay, so what I've just done is I've added on a um, beta prism diagonal. And what that means is that I'm going to be able to get most eyepieces to focus without the use of the extender that we have there. The beta one is a wonderful um, instrument. It is German. Um, and for, for this particular part, I really do recommend you get a beta. Okay, we're just going to pop a cap back. Let's put on an eyepiece now. Right, we now are ready to go. This is probably what you would use to start viewing. Um, I have a 40 mil plus light piece in there. I've got the beta 1.25 inch prism diagonal. I've got the um, items set up. We're now ready to start thinking a little bit more about balancing and how we'll go. So we actually have two axes that we need to balance. Why do we not need to balance it? Why not just use it the way that it is now? The reason we need to balance it is because if we don't, nothing will work when it comes to the slow motion controls. It simply can't bear the weight. It's not designed for that. Everything needs to be properly balanced. Otherwise, it's not going to be joyful to use. It's gonna be a real pain in the neck and something's gonna flip or, or fall over or you're gonna have some horrible accident. So let's just get this balanced right first. Which one are we gonna do first? Okay, well, let's have a look at it. I'm going to, I've decided that I'm going to balance maybe um, this axis first. So I'm just going to loosen it. I'll, I'll do it on this side just so you've got a bit of a better view of what I'm doing. And I'm going to illustrate the... Uh, yeah, we can do that. This, this end's probably going to be alright. So let's... Now I'm holding it again because I need to. Let's see if it's balanced. It is not balanced, friends. If I let go, it's going to... This side is going to start flipping down. So what does that tell us? That tells us that we need to use the, move the telescope backward, don't, don't we? So what we're going to do now is we're just going to loosen this a little bit. And we want to avoid that. All right. And we're going to just push the telescope back. Do not loosen it so far that they'll flip out like that one just did. <laughs> okay, because your telescope can fall out. All right, so let's have a look how it's balanced now. So if it's right, I should be able to move it in the same direction 
without really being a problem. I think I need to just push it back a little bit more. There we are. There, that's nicely balanced. Can you see that, friends? It's just as easy to move it in one direction as the other. So we now know, okay, that's going to be fine. Next, we tighten this, they tighten the rings so that it can't slip or move. You don't have to jam them really tight, just have them, have them ready to go. So this is now fine, nicely balanced. All right. So I'm just going to lock it in. I'm now going to put this back. Yeah. I'm ready for the next bit. Just going to show that for you. All right. So that's the bit that we want to see. I'm just going to have that nice and level. Okay. So how about this side? Now we're balancing this axis. How am I going with that? Let's find out. What I'm going to do is I'm going to loosen it. Oh, wow, look at that. Can you see how it just wants to fall flop down right away? So I know that's not working out. Let's loosen the counterweight and start moving it to the very end. Ah, right. So if it tips the other way with the counterweight fully extended, then you know that one's going to be enough. So what we do now is we just move it in a little bit. There we go. Look at that. That's nicely balanced, isn't it? So now we tighten that. Friends, we now have a nice and balanced scope. Everything's working well. All right, we're just going to move that out. There we are. Look at that. Awesome. That's ready for viewing. And by the way, if you loosen up those rings again, just a little bit, you're going to be able to adjust that scope's edge and how it, how it is so that this is nice and straight, depending on what you want to look at. Don't forget to tighten them up again afterward. All right, so how do you find a target now that you've got this? Loosen up the knobs. Away you go. If I want to look at a target over there, move it up here. If I want to look at an object over there, I can do that. Okay. And another thing you can do is you can just tight, loosen this and just readjust this so that you'll get the eyepiece where you want it. So that you're able to then go and view a target. Okay. Remember, I do have a cap on the ends, friends. I'd never do this during the daytime without the cap because you could hit the sun. Okay. And um, needless to say, that would be very bad for you. Okay, awesome. So, what a cool scope. F12, 102 millimeters, two inch diagonal so that you're able to uh, focus her and, and you can use any eyepiece with this one. It's tremendously flexible. It's got the fine focus on the end. You have a six by 30 finder here, uh, a fully extendable dew shield. You have a complete metal construction. None of this is plastic. All of it, even this section, which looks like, oh, that's probably plastic. It's not. It's actually metal. Even the focuser knobs on both ends, everything is built extremely well so that you're able to really enjoy it. Notice as well the pier. Can you see why we want that pier height? It's because it makes it so much more comfortable to view targets. What if you want to look at a zenith object? Guys, with this one here, you pretty much can, all right? You're able to do almost, we'll just extend that out fully and lock it, okay? So what we're able to do is you can, you can look at very, very high targets. Um, you can get a chair and you can still use it. Can you imagine what this would be like without the pier, it, with a long focal length instrument? It wouldn't work very well. So this is a package which really is designed um, for it and it's all you need, okay? You really don't need any more. This is my, probably my dream scope. This would be my lifetime instrument if I could only have one. This would probably be it, just for the, the flexibility and all the things that you can do with it. So guys, I, I hope you've enjoyed that. What we've done is we've taken an EQ4, we've set it up completely from scratch, from the unboxing, right up to the use stage. Didn't even take us that long, did it? Um, and you don't need to disassemble absolutely everything when you uh, finish with it again. You can just um, uh, push that back together, put that into the box, and um, it's nice and portable. Yeah? Great. I'll see you on uh, www.astrodog.com.au. Um, if you haven't already, please like and subscribe. Um, we're going to show off more videos uh, and more products very soon. Thank you.